Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to our second live field trip. Our team consists of Anissa, Veronica, Jose, Raimundo, and me, Edith. In this field trip, we're going to explore a virtual museum that was built to demonstrate the work of the famous artist Joanne Vermeer. Let's talk a few moments about our art. We were researching about it and we like an article to keep it simple and straightforward. This article talks about three simple steps to understand art. First one, to look. Second one, see. And third one, think. The first two, look and see, are about using your eyes and observational skills. And the third one requires more thought. When we see anything, whether it's a work of art or a movie, our brains perform a massively complex a split second process of reading and making meaning. So the step one is to look. When we visit a gallery, we tend to spend only a few seconds in front of any one work. There are some estimates that have it under two seconds. So look at what, what is there literally right in front of you. I start with the most basic question. What medium or material is it? Is it a photograph, an object, a painting? How does it look? Rough and quick, slick and neat, shiny, dirty, carefully made? The artist made some deliberate decisions about the materials, style, and approach. And this will fit directly into the overall feel and meaning of the work. The step two is theme. What's the difference between looking and seeing in the context of art? Looking is about literally describing what is in front of you, while seeing is about applying meaning to it. When we see, we understand what is seen as symbol, and we interpret what is there in front of us. So the step three, think. The final step involves thinking about what you have observed, drawing together what you have gleaned from the first two steps and thinking about possible means. Importantly, this is a process of interpretation. Also think about who is the artist. Is it someone whose work you know something about? If so, what do you know about them? If you have never heard of the artist, what does his or her name suggest about where they might be from? Sex panels in galleries usually have the artist date and where he or she was born. There, these are important clues. When was the work made? What do you know about what's happening at that time, even if it is this year? Text panels sometimes say where the artists were. So where was the work made? Artists uh, produce work that responds to the role. They are immersed in every day. So the when and the where, it will give you clues as to what was happening. Now I'll say, will share with you a notebook that contains a link to teleport to the Vermeer Museum. You must accept the notebook and open it. In order to teleport, you need to click on the Vermeer Museum and then click on the teleport button. Before we teleport to the virtual Vermeer Museum, let me advise you to lower the volume of the music on the top right-hand side and place the mouse over the speaker icon and several options will display. Only move the board for the music setting to the left to load the music, or you can mute it if you want. Jose will remain in this island until everyone has teleported. So let me know when everybody's here. There's two more coming our way. I'm not going to be able to join on uh, Second Life today because there's no internet at work. 
So I'm just watching. Okay. Is everybody here? Everyone's here. Okay. If you did not mute your music settings, you will be able to listen to the background music. You can hear classical and Baroque music interpret interpreted by Mozart and Chopin, music from the era. Let's go inside and explore the museum as you and Let's go ahead and go inside. Let me go ahead and open the door. And as soon as you enter to the left, there is, um, I don't know if you can go ahead and see it. There is a small uh, job where they can go ahead and uh, make donations in here. It's a donation job. They can go ahead and uh, make real donations to the creator of this machine. So now there's side objects in here. You may think that these objects are decorative objects, but these are very meaningful. The furniture and objects you see, they are related to the artist, and you can find them in some of the Vermeer paintings. You can touch the objects and the description will be displayed with information. So let's look at the very first table that is right here in front of me. The very first one to the left. This, um, the legs have a striking bulbous form. The remarkable bun shaped feet later provided the Dutch name of this style of furniture called put. In the 17th century, however, this type of table was known as a draw leaf table because it could be extended by pulling out extra leaves. Let's explore the work of one of the great 17th century Dutch masters, Joanne Vermeer. Now Jose will continue with the tour and talk about the painter and describe some other interesting paintings and objects. All right, hello. Um, I'm Jose Cedillo. I'm the avatar with the red beanie. I'm right in front of uh, one of the tables. So this is where I'm going to start. So hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vermeer Museum. I'll be presenting a brief description of the artist and two pieces found inside. Just outside of the museum, you probably notice two message boards on either side of the entrance. The one on the left is from the creator of the museum, Ginger Henderson. And the other is of a list of art galleries found in Second Life. Anissa will be talking about Ginger Henderson later on the tour. The one thing I want to point out is that Ginger has sized all the paintings to scale of the real ones. Inside the museum, let's see. So, as you can see, there are many, uh, there is more than just paintings on display. Objects found in Vermeer's paintings can be found around the museum, one of which is located on the table to the left, the one that I'm facing. It resembles a compass. The object is called an astrolabe. A, a similar one can be found or seen in Vermeer's painting titled The Astronomer. That painting is located at the end of the room to your right. An astrolabe is an elaborate inclinometer historically used by astronomers, navigators, and astrologers. Its many use include locating and predicting the position of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. It can also determine location, lo local time given local latitude. It was used in classical antiquity, the European Middle Ages, and the Renaissance for all these purposes. Islams would use it to find the direction of Mecca for prayer. Clicking on the object will provide information in the chat box section of Second Life. Now I'm going to talk about who Johannes Vermeer was. He lived from 1632 to 1675, and he died at the age of 43. He was a Dutch Baroque painter from the golden age of Dutch painting. He was married and had 14 children. Unfortunately, three died before the age of two. He lived all his life in the city of Delft, 
located in the Netherlands. He didn't travel much. His father was a merchant of paintings, and after his death, Johannes took over the family business. He was the supplier and distributor all at once. You would think Vermeer would be making decent income covering both bases of the art world, but no. He was a Dutch Baroque artist who was also broke when he died, living, leaving his wife and children in great debt. Unlike Van Gogh or Monet, uh, where between both of them, they created over 3,000 paintings, Vermeer created less than 2% of what these brilliant men did. There are only 36 authenticated paintings by Vermeer in the world. This is because he would only paint two to three in a year. Only 16 of his paintings are signed. Incredibly, he was self-taught. There is no record of Vermeer being an apprentice to any of the famous artists in that region at that time. I see him as a common man with a brilliant gift uh, who struggled to keep his family financially stable. He painted scenes that were relatable to him. His paintings focus on domestic interior scenes of middle-class life. He didn't become famous because of the realistic renderings of figures and objects he painted, but because of the radiance of light that illuminates his pictures. If you look to your left from the main entrance, you will see one such painting on the, of the city where he was born and raised in, the city of Delft. I'm going to go ahead and walk to that area, but you can see which one I'm talking about. I really wanted, I purchased a pointer, like a laser pointer, but it doesn't really work that well. Yeah, Raimundo is pointing to the, to the actual uh, painting right there. Okay, so all the paintings are interactive, meaning you can click on the painting to find information on everything from what museum in the world it is currently located in to where the artist's signature is located on the picture. You can click on the keyboard letter M to get a closer look at the picture. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty good feature on um, Second Life. The view of Delft was painted between 1660 and 1661. Oil on canvas was the medium used with the dimension size being 100 by 118 centimeters. It is the second biggest painting created by Vermeer. The painting of Delft, uh, the painting of the Dutch artist's hometown is among his most popular. Painted at a time uh, when cityscapes were uncommon. It is one of three snapshots painted of Delft by Vermeer. This is a very realistic image of Vermeer's birthplace and it almost transports the viewer to the scene as he observed it. His use of lighting is objective and has a photographic quality to it, demonstrating the artist's talent. The painting is believed, believed to have been a commissioned painting for a man who had collected more than half of Amir's paintings. For more information, like I said, you can click on the link provided by the painting. So now Raimundo will continue with the tour and present some other interesting paintings and objects. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh... Please follow me this this way. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about this this painting here which you have probably seen before since this is uh, this is named the girl with a pearl earring and it's from 1665 and is considered one of Vermeer's masterpiece. This is an oil painting and it's a trony of a girl with a head scarf and a pearl earring. A trony is a common type of work from the Dutch golden age that shows an exaggerated facial expression. The painting has been in the, in the collection of the Maurices in the Hague since 1902. The painting depicts an European young girl we wearing an exotic dress and an oriental turban and an improbably large pearl earring, which is another topic of discussion if this was a fake. Being so large that 
that there can be little doubt that the pearl worn by the young girl is either fake or a product of the artist's imagination. At the time, imitation pearls were being produced so that women could afford what only kings or queens wore. One aspect of this of his meticulous painting techniques was Vermeer's choice of pigments. He's best known for his frequent use of the very expensive ultramarine color used in the milkman painting, and also the lead teen yellow used in the lady writing a letter. Also the Madeira Lake color used in the in, in Christ in the house of Martha and Mary, and the vermilion color. In Vermeer's paintings, only about 20 pigments have been detect detected. Vermeer's painting techniques have long been a source of debate, given their almost photorealistic attention to detail despite Vermeer's having had no formal training and despite only limited evidence that Vermeer had created sketches or traces for his paintings. The Girl with the Pearl is another example of a realistic painting with depth, illusion, and three-dimensional. If you click on the picture, you will see uh, a uh, description of the picture and then at the end you see a a link that I would like for you to open. Uh, please, if you can open Dr. Corell the one that, that says essentialvermeer.com Or if you want, I can, I can. I opened it, but it, uh, only I can see it. Oh, okay. If you want Everybody would have to click on it to open it themselves. Okay. Well, if, if you want, I can share my screen or if you, if you all can, can see that page. Uh, what we like about this page is that it has all details of the painting. If you see like on top, it has the name of the painting, the year it was created, uh, the, uh, the type of materials used, the actual dimensions, where is the painting located. And you can even track like what's the current uh, location of the painting. Also um, below, the, below the image, you see like special topics that relates to the painting. And if you click on those, um, uh, to the right hand side, you'll see more descriptions of, of those, t of those uh, topics. Another thing we like is that, is that on the bottom, you'll see also a section for fact sheet. Uh, and in there, for example, if you click where it says signature, you can see Vermeer's signature that it was uh, inscribed in, in the painting. Uh, you can see the, the dates, the exhibitions, and a lot more information. Um, but if you if you click on the if you if you hover over the, the the image, you will see, for example, like when you hover over the background, or any of the like the nose or the eyes uh, of of the girl, you see the descriptions of the painting. And for example, the background will give you information about the tones and the colors uh, that he used. Um, for example, the black background were widely used in portraits to enhance the three-dimensional effect in the painting. Another important aspect of the painting are the eyes and the illusion that the girl is seeing you. And that's why this painting became so famous and is considered the Mona Lisa of the North. If you click on the signature um, that is located on the on the fact sheet uh, section, you will see the signature 
and it tells you that it's inscribed in the painting, but but from this image, you are not able to see it uh, or appreciate that. So another resource that we found very uh, interesting, it's what you see as, uh, there's a link that is called Google Art Project. If you can open that page uh, and, and open the, the, the site. This is another uh, page that we liked because if you, if you click on the image, you can actually zoom in and, and, and if you, you can actually zoom in all the way and, and if, you, if you move your, like you can drag the image and see other, like move to the top left uh, hand side of the picture and you will actually appreciate the the signature that is embedded in, in, the, in the painting. So you can see more details of the colors and even the, uh, the actual like current conditions of the painting. The signature is specifically in this painting, it's so interesting because this was one of the paintings that that was lost or, and when it was found by, by another artist and, and it was when it was clean and restored that the artist found the, the signature of Vermeer on, on it. Okay, so we can go back now to, to Second Life and I'm gonna show you another object that it's in here if we walk this way to the center of the museum. And the object that I'm going to show you, um, it's this uh, piano that is in the, in the center. This is called a Musular Virginal. So if you can see this, uh, you can see this instrument in some or various Vermeer's paintings. A virginal is a smaller or simpler rectangular form of a harp, harp, harp shaped core with only one string per note, running more or less like parallel to the keyboard on the long side of the case. So let me let me sit on on the on the, on the chair and I'm gonna play the virginal for a second so you can listen. Uh, how it sounded. Okay, so thanks for listening. So now Veronica will continue with the tour and present you some other interesting paintings and objects found in the museum. Uh, hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my, my avatar is not showing because I have a no responding screen on Second Life right now, uh, like a few minutes ago. Uh, I was wondering if I can just point to the pictures that I was gonna be mentioning, please, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, appreciate. Uh, so the first one that I will be mentioning is the Procurus. Okay, it, it should be right uh, next to the right uh, to the muscular virginal that you were mentioning. There is this painting and it's a 1656 oil on canvas painting by the 24 year old John Vermeer. And it can be seen they call them Mayor Gallery over Mainstream in Dresden. Uh, it is his first genre paint, painting and shows a scene of contemporary life, an image of mercenary law, perhaps in a brutal. It differs from his earlier biblical and mythological scenes. It's one of the three painters that were mere signed and dated. The other two were uh, the astronomer and the geographer. 
It seems Vermeer was influenced by early works of the same subject by Gerard Turbot and the Procurist by Dirk van Baburi, which was owned by Vermeer's mother-in-law, Maria Pins, and hung in her home. The, the other painting is the one that is on the right side on, on, that, on that area, and it's the San Uh and it's, okay, it's an oil painting attributed to John Vermeer. This attribution has often been questioned. However, in 2014, the auction house Christie's announced the results of new investigations which in their opinion demonstrate conclusively that it was in fact a Vermeer. The painting is a copy of a work by Felice Fritcherly and depicts the early Roman Martin San Praxitis or Praxitis. It might be Vermeer's early surviving work dating from 1655. The painting shows the scientist squeezing a Martin's blood from a sponge into an ornate vessel. It is closely related to a work by Ficciarelli from 6040 to 45, now in the collection of Bergiani in Ferrara, and is generally assumed to be a copy of it. Now, if we go back a little bit uh, to, to the center of the room where, uh, where we can see the, the two tables at the beginning, at the entrance, we can see the, that small table that has a small box on the right, and it's supposed, and it's a, a Dutch food stuff, which is a, 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 a wooden box with some holes at the top, and it was used to hit the feet for the people. And inside, it has like a, a, a ceramic bowl where they can have like a burning charcoal, and they were used to to hit people's feet. So we can see a similar object in the painting named the milkmaid that Raimundo was mentioning before, that it's right on the left of the, the girl with the early, early, her early. And we have explaining that most of the objects that are in this museum are related to the, to the paintings that are exposed. So now Anissa will talk about the site creator and describe one more painting for us. Thank you. Hello, Anissa. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to be speaking a little bit about the creator of the site. Her name was Ginger Henderson. Now, she created this site after she had begun reading about the great Dutch masters of the 17th century, and it was through these readings that she began to fall in love with Vermeer's art. Vermeer is particularly known for his use of light in his work. With the use of a camera obscura, he was able to capture the outline as well as the way the light reacted on objects that he was painting. As mentioned at the beginning of the tour, the various objects in the museum were put there by the creator and resemble objects from his paintings. Now, the creator made this site very interactive. All paintings have some brief information that you can get by placing your cursor over the painting and clicking on the green eye that appears along with the title of the painting. The information will appear in the nearby chat for only you to see. To get more information, there are links included in the chat box from different sites from which the creator received her information. Now as a group, we chose Second Life to do this field trip because it's a virtual environment that helps us explore real and fictitious places where we can teach and learn about art. We explored two other places in Second Life, Little Paris and Egyptian Museum. Both places are still under construction and not much information is available just yet. Now one of the reasons that we were drawn to this particular virtual museum is that it has all the paintings of this particular artist in one location. Visitors can stop by at any time and appreciate these pieces of art in this museum. While in real life, his paintings are located in different places and some are even lost. Now, if you recall in the beginning of the tour, we did recommend lowering the music settings prior to transporting to the museum. This is because it tied into the coherence principle from chapter seven. 
The music is wonderful to listen to if you're just visiting the museum. However, to avoid distractions during a guided tour, it is recommended that the music be muted or lowered to the most minimal setting. Our intention is to open our, our minds to the possibility of looking for more virtual art museums to learn more about art history. Now, if you all will follow me towards the front doors, the painting to the left will be the last, the last painting that we discuss. Be careful not to leave the building. Now, the last painting that we will be exploring is a painting entitled Christ in the House of Martha and Mary. This particular painting took a year to complete. He began in 1654 and finished in 1655. It is housed in the National Gallery of Scotland in Edinburgh. It is the largest painting by Vermeer and one of the very few with an overt religious motive. The story of Christ visiting the household of the two sisters, Mary and Martha, goes back to the New Testament. The work has also been called Christ in the House of Mary and Martha, reversing the two names of the women. Now this concludes our virtual tour of the Vermeer Museum. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope you all enjoyed your visit and will come as often as needed. Feel free to take a, mu a few minutes to explore the museum and access detailed information about any painting or object of your interest. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Team Two. Uh, any questions for Team Two? Well, personally, I think that you all did a very, very good job on this, this tour. I think the, the selection is probably one of the, the best examples of a museum exhibit I've seen in Second Life. So good job on selecting it. You're right about how you get to see all of the work of one painter in one location. Uh, that might be impossible to do. You know, if, if we wanted to see the work of Vermeer, we'd have to be rich and have access to a jet to be able to go to different parts of the country or the world. And as was mentioned, some of the part, some of the pieces that are actually lost. So uh, if you can imagine <clears throat> the amount of, of work that, it, that went into building this building, and putting in all of these works and putting all of the supplemental resources. Uh, it's an amazing work of, of I mean, really, uh, what do they call it? Um, a labor of love because it must have taken hundreds and hundreds of hours to do this. So, and it's a classic, a perfect example of how you could teach a subject such as art in Second Life and do it in an effective way. Any comments or questions for Team Two before we call it a night? Uh, you all did a great job. I really enjoyed uh, seeing all these uh, paintings in one place and uh, everybody collaborated and, you know, uh, explained it very well. Great job. I agree. I want to follow that. They did an awesome job. Um, I actually enjoyed seeing them point at the objects that they were uh, discussing at the time and providing those links to external um, articles and resources so we can continue learning more about them. That was interesting to see as well. Yeah, and it's a good example of how you could bring other outside resources in uh, I can envision somebody doing a lesson uh, where students could go and if you gave them uh, a list of things that they had to find about certain things, certain paintings, about the artist himself, you'd be able to do it with this site and the related resources. So very nice. Okay, everyone. I want to say thank you again to Team 2 on behalf of the class. You did a really good job. Uh, you all, even though there were some minor technical issues, the overall the, the, the tour was very smooth, very well organized, and very interesting. So thank you all.
Remember, as I mentioned at the beginning of class, next week I'm going to be out of town. <clears throat> I'll be at the TCEA conference. So if you're going to be there, come by and see us. We'll be in the exhibitors hall. Uh, we've set up a booth so that we can recruit for the EdTech program and so that we can meet up with some of our uh, current and former students and hopefully even some future ones. So if you're going to be there, do come by, please. Um, so I'm thinking next week, instead of trying to, to be able to um, find a place with fast enough Wi-Fi, um, we, we just won't meet next week. And teams three and four will meet, will do their, their presentations in week seven. Okay? So thank you all again. Good night, everyone. Uh, I will be trying to provide feedback for uh, part three as soon as I can. I've got meetings throughout most of the day tomorrow, so I hope to be able to get to it during the weekend. But uh, definitely, I will get it to you as quickly as I possibly can. All right? Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you all. You. And we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everyone.